Glory to God. The Lord is good. Amen. Why don't we stand up on our feet this morning? And uh, how many came ready to, to receive, ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Amen. If you came expecting, you will get something. That's right. Amen. If you came expecting nothing, you're still going to get something. Amen. You're going to get nothing. <laughs> but if you came expecting, God has a word for his church. We are living in the last days, and it's the most exciting time. Not a fearful time, but a sobering, exciting time for the church. So this is when we need to rise up and, and dig in, not despair, but just go in even harder. Amen? The Lord's doing great and mighty things in our lives, and I know that, uh, that we're coming up and we're going over. More than we've ever had. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So let's worship the Lord this morning. And all those that are joining us online, thank you for getting together with your family. Set this time aside. You know, don't get busy doing stuff around the house. Uh, this is convenient that we were able to do it this way, but it doesn't mean for you to sit around and do nothing. Prepare yourself, get ready for service, and worship the Lord with us. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time together. God, you are so good. You are our very present help in times of trouble, Father. Our hope is in you. Our strength is in you. And we honor you. We thank you, Father, that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, we thank you for the truth that we have. And we thank you for the work that you have called us to do, Father. May you be glorified in all that's said and done today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. We're no longer slaves, amen. Say that this morning. My God is a way maker. 
He makes a river in the desert. <laughs> he, he's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. No matter what the report you're getting, no matter what a doctor tells you, the final authority is what his word says. It's what his word says. That's what we stand on. That's what we stand on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Thank you. We just lift your voices to Lord. Thank you this morning. Oh, we honor you in this place, God. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, here, moving in now. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship.
thank you for your presence here. We worship you. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy. We honor you. The king is in our presence. And we honor you, the king, the master, the head of the church, Jesus. We worship you. Father, we're so thankful that you did not want heaven without us. That you sent your son. And you paid the price to redeem us. To bring us back. To restore the fellowship because of sin. Hallelujah. And it's your will, Father, that no person on this earth perish but have eternal life. And we're so thankful that we are. But we realize that there are others that need this truth and this hope. So, Father, we thank you that through the preaching of your word today and through worship, Father, as you're glorified, your word tells us that you would draw people to you. May people see you today. May they hear you today. May those that know you, may they fortify their relationship. And those that don't, may they humble themselves and come and seek you and receive grace and help and into the family, Father. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You guys can be seated. Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord with our giving. We did just worship Him with our song. And so we're going to worship Him with our, uh, with our giving this morning. It's part of our worship. Amen? Amen. It's an honor. If you need an offering, give a look for your hands. You guys can raise them. Uh, for your hands, for your giving, rather. But we you need, need to put hands up in your hand. Um, <laughs> just raise your hands. The ushers will see that you do get one. Uh, uh, for those who give by text, we just need to let you know this. Online giving is available, but for some reason they updated the whatever they did on their end and didn't uh, update the number. We're getting that fixed sometime tomorrow. So you can't text your offering today, which is what I usually do. So now you have to go on our website and click on the giving tab And if you're doing it electronically. Obviously, if you're giving by check, then that's the normal means. But if you're doing it electronically, just go to our website, uh, www.abundantgracechurch.com. There's a giving tab. You can click on that and uh, just put in your information. So how many know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver? Yes. Aren't you blessed to have seed to sow? I, I, I'm serious. I am beyond blessed that I have seed to sow. And the more seed I sow, the more harvest that I have coming up. But, but it isn't even so much about the harvest coming up. When you're looking to put seed in the ground, you're always in a, in a, in a state of expectancy. You're looking to be a blessing to other people. God wants us blessed, church, so that we can bless others. If I have nothing with which to help somebody else, how can I be a blessing that way? Right? And, and when, when our heart, that's seeking first the kingdom of God, his business, his righteousness. And he said that everything that you could ever imagine or desire will be given to you. And I have to tell you, the time frame that we live here on this earth is such a short, it's like a vapor. You know, we're not storing up treasures here on earth. We're laying up treasures in heaven, in heaven. And when we give and we sow, it gets it, it gets uh, registered to our account in heaven. And when we bless somebody, the Bible says that whatever you do unto the least of these, my you do unto God. Yes, you know, and when you when you when you help somebody financially or with your time or or you sow things to somebody, God keeps track of that in His register. Yes. You know, and, and, and what good is it, the Bible says, that you see your brother in need and you say, oh, be blessed, have a great day, sleep good tonight. And meanwhile, they have no food, no house, or anything. What, what did we do? What did we accomplish? And then we end it with, hey, man, come to church. God loves you. They're like, uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> We're good. You know, apparently you people in church don't have anything because if you did, you'd help me. Amen. And now, obviously, you got to be led yes. by the Spirit because, Amen. you know, there are people out there trying to. But. When you have something to do something with, you're able to be a blessing yes, to other people. Amen. And I'm sharing all that with you this morning because God, it, it, the, the, the church always gets this, um, that they want your money. You talk to people who don't even come to church. And the minute you mention church, the first thing they all they want is money. I know we don't. No, we don't. In fact, God will get us whatever we need. It's according to his riches and glory, not according to your congregation. You are blessed because you sow in obedience. We're blessed as a church because we obey what God tells us to do. And as a church, when you sow here, you're sowing into a tithing church. Because we give 10% of what comes in here as the Lord directs us. And I've shared this. You know, we, we have friends of ours, uh, you know, that are in the South Pacific, uttermost ministries. 
that, you know, my wife and I, we support personally, but the church shows to them. And you, there, <laughs> there's people that live all over this planet that we have no idea uh, exist on these little islands, right. literally, with 200 people on it. They don't know anything what Christmas is. They've never heard anything. You know, they don't know what refrigeration is. Nothing, nothing. nothing. When I tell you it's remote, it's remote. You can only get to it by a boat. And they're going. And if you ever go on their website, and I encourage you to do so, because we're sowing as a church. You're sowing to that. And there are multitudes of people coming into the kingdom. I don't know. Did everyone hear that? Like, we just picture our neighborhood around here. In the South Pacific, in the Samoan Islands, there are people coming into the kingdom. God is raising up pastors there to pastor these 200 people on this remote island. And they're worshiping and serving the same God that we are right here. The same spirit that raised Christ that dwells in us dwells in them. But it, but it happens because we have sown seed. And that seed enabled these people to get a boat and go, as they obey God, reach these people. Amen. And the last days are fast upon us. And when the book closes, that's it. That's it. And there's a work to be done. And you know what? It's the goodness of God that causes people to change their ways. It's his goodness. It's his goodness that made me change. And you know what? When you can be a blessing and good to somebody and help them, then you're going to get their attention. Then you can say, hey, look, you know, Jesus loves you. You know, I'm blessed because God loves me and he wants me to be a blessing to you. Yes. That gets someone's Amen. attention. Amen. You know? Not when you stiff the waiter, okay, and then you leave them the AGC business card on their table. Don't ever do that, okay? Because it's a bad representation. Because that's not how we do things. We want to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Uh, and and which, whatever way you sow, how you sow, is how it's measured back to yeah. you. Amen? Yeah. And if I could sum it up, and you guys are such a blessing, and all those who are partnered with us online and give from wherever you're at, uh, we speak God's blessings upon you. And I know that there's testimonies of people in this church and all over that have come up in their, their giving and their believing at, because of their faithfulness to sow. And as we give, we know that, that, that it's measured back to us, good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. So let's just let's just hold our, our seat up to, to the Lord right now and, and let's honor him with it. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity. You said that you would always provide seed for the sower. Father, we sow our seed into your kingdom as you as you uh, direct us, we obey the, the inward witness, Father. We sow, we bring our tithes into the storehouse. And you said to prove me this day. That I would not open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you wouldn't have room enough to contain it. And, and that I would rebuke the devourer for our sake. So, Father, I thank you that the devourer is rebuked. Satan, we're telling you, take your hands off our finances. Take your hands off our business propositions. Off of anything that we have, we command you to take your hands off of it in obedience to the word. We're givers, and because we are. The ministering spirits go on our behalf and cause increase to come into our life. Not to hoard it up and brag, but to give to other people and other ministries as you direct us to do. And Father, we thank you that you're glorified in our giving. And Father, I speak blessings over the people today as they sow. Blessings into their life, Father. Increase to come. Debts being paid off quickly. Reduced. Mortgages being paid. Supernaturally, Father. Every bill paid. Every need met according to your riches and glory. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hey, there we are. Glory to God. God is good, right? All the time. You guys glad you came to church today? Felt like we had church already. More to come. Um, before Pastor Ready brings the word, let's just get started with some announcements we have. Um, before I do that, though, do we have any first-time visitors? Anybody visiting us for the first time? Raise your hand up. We want to say hello. Well, glory to God. We are glad you are here. Amen. All right, so just a couple of things, guys. Um, I want to remind you, because we, we, we want to do this maybe in the next weeks to follow, We'd like you to email us if you have it. If you have a testimony, I'd like you to email us here at the church at prayerpraise at abundantgracechurch.com. Again, that's prayerpraise at abundantgracechurch.com. What we want to do is, you know, for the sake of time, we, we want to be able to read some testimonies in the upcoming weeks. Because I know personally, a lot of people have shared with me. Didn't matter what the world looked like, because how do we walk by faith and not by sight, that there have been a lot of testimonies in a world that seems to have gone crazy. Amen. So glory to God. So email that to us. Email us at prayerpraise at abundantgracechurch.com, and we'll read some testimonies in the weeks to follow. So also a reminder, it's just about that time we need to close out the Thanksgiving gift cards. Because next week, next Sunday, is the last Sunday before Thanksgiving. So if you haven't done so already, we're asking you for $25 denominations uh, of gift cards that will be distributed, you know, how many cards people get based on the size of the families that we have. So also, if you know a family that needs one or needs some of these gift cards, uh, you can still have time before next week to put it on the list that's out at the reception desk. So don't forget, they're going to be distributed after next Sunday during the uh, food pantry hours. So um, please bring those in, and then we'll accomplish everything with regard to that. Amen. You know, I can't believe it's Thanksgiving already, right? Amen. I mean, I, I always tell Jody, I feel like we just closed our pool, which was like two months ago, right? And it like, like it was just spring, you know, yesterday. But before we know it, we're going to turn around, it's going to be Christmas, yeah. right? So how many people know we've always done a giving tree, a giving yeah, decorated yeah. Christmas tree for children that are in need of gifts? We're doing it a little bit different this year, so I want to kind of get you guys prepared because next week we're going to put out a list for you to, to, to put some people on it. So before, we've always received lists and some you know recommendations to, from people whose families need gifts for children. This year, we want to keep it exclusively to people you all know so, and that, that have children that are in need of gifts. And the gifts are for children 13 and under. We're still going to do the hearts on the tree where you take one, you fill it out, and you leave that one so we know the children that you've pledged to purchase gifts for. But... We'll have a sign-up sheet starting next week. If you know families that children are in need of a gift, all we need you to do is put on that sign-up sheet, um, whether it's a boy or girl, remember 13 and under, um, and their contact information for the family so that we can reach out to them and let them know their, their gifts are here. If it's something where maybe you're going to you know, give them, pass them along to the people, then let us know that as well. So. Like I said, we're going to turn around and it's going to be Christmas like tomorrow. So let's start thinking about that, thinking about families that you know, you run into, family, whatever it is, children 13 and under, and then we'll start to, when we start to decorate, we'll decorate the Christmas tree. And obviously along those lines, keep your eyes out for, and your ears out for an announcement about decorating the church. Amen. So glory to God. Pastor? I'm on, I'm on. I think I am. Praise God. Thank you. Uh, God is good. Amen. <clears throat> How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? How many came expecting today? How many came expecting to not see me but Bob Yandian? <laughs> that's, that's the question. Well, uh, I'm not Bob Yandian. However, I have the same Holy Spirit inside of me that he does. <laughs> Amen. And he's our teacher, right? The Holy Ghost is our teacher. Uh, we had to postpone uh, uh, Reverend Yandian due to uh, COVID and all this other stuff that's going on. So uh, we just, you know, after speaking with him, we 
perceive that it's best to, to do that. So we're going to, once we get through this, and this is all going to pass too, we will, uh, he'll be back. He'll be back. So he's excited and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So glory to God. Why don't we stand up on our feet this morning? And let's just release faith together. We're going to go before the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And we're going to thank him. I asked you before, how many came ready to receive today? Expect something. So we keep the switch of faith turned on. Amen. And uh, it's by faith, by faith, right? By faith, we please God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I believe that you have a word for your church. Timely, Father. Timely in season, straight from your heart. And so I ask you to speak through me, Father exactly what you want spoken. I yield to the Holy Ghost and together we release faith that we'll get exactly what it is that you want us to know. Revelation, knowledge, Father, impartations of truth. Father, I thank you that we take heed how we hear and we hear with hearts that are ready to receive, Father, willing and humble to hear from you. So, Holy Spirit, we ask you to teach us. You are the teacher. You're the helper. You're the quickener. You're our witness, our guide. We yield to you, and we trust you today for utterance that we hear exactly. Father, that it's, that it's clear and concise and bold in exactly the way you want it to be. And I thank you that it will produce in every person who hears it, yes. and you'll bring glory to yourself, Father, in it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory be to God. Well, the Lord is good. It's always an honor to, uh, to study the Word. Amen? Amen? How many get so much out of reading the Word? Amen. I'll tell you, if you're not reading the Word, you, you're, 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 you're <laughs> yeah, you are lost. <laughs> and, and if you're not spending time in the Word, you're cutting yourself short spiritually, big time. There's no way. It's just like if we didn't eat food for our natural bodies, you know, we would eventually lose a lot of weight and eventually not be here. But uh, the same thing, <laughs> the same thing is with our spirit, our spirit. You know, we don't realize, you know, Smith Wigglesworth used to, uh, he'd always have his Bible with him. And every time he'd eat a meal, he'd, uh, he'd push back from the table after he was done eating his meal and he'd open up the Bible and he'd say, we've fed our natural flesh. Now we're going to feed our spirit. And that way he knew that he, they were getting equal attention, right? And, that's, and, and look at the great things that he did uh, for the kingdom, amen? So, and God is no respecter of persons. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Those who diligently seek him. And when you start praying these Ephesian prayers, like we've been talking about, and, and the prayers in Colossians, you're going to see impartations uh, and revelation knowledge unfold to you as you begin to open the Word. I mean, you're not going to get anything just sitting there going, let me have something. You have to open up the Bible, and you have to study it. And as you do, and you do that in faith, and you're feeding your spirit, faith comes because it's the Word, and God begins to reveal Himself to you. Amen. And that's how we grow. That's how we're strengthened. So glory to God. How many brought their Bible this morning? Amen. Praise God. We have, the Lord uh, has uh, uh, really impressed upon my heart. We're, we're starting a new series. We just finished our other one last week. If you've missed any of those, uh, we have them all on our website. I would encourage you to go back, check them out. We, we did three weeks or so, maybe more than that, on staying in a place of faith. And, uh, and so uh, you can go to our website, read, uh, listen to those, take some notes, and, uh, and catch up with us. And then so in preparing, you know, it was kind of short notice. All this transpired with, uh, with Bob Yandian very quickly. So, uh, but I was, I was, um, I was preparing because I thought he was going to be ministering. But, uh, you know, the Bible says to be instant, ready, in season and out, you know. And uh, shouldn't be nothing for a Christian to be able to share something at any wow. given point. Because if you're full of the word, it's going to come out of you. You know, it's going to come out of you. But it's, you, want to, you want direction. You want to hear from God exactly what. And, and so I was praying and the Lord really spoke to me. And I believe that this series that we're going to start is very pertinent for the body of Christ today. In the times that we're living in. In the, in the times of uncertainty. Okay. In the times of pandemics and and, and earthquakes and fires and floods and all this stuff, which is prophecy being fulfilled, which is how we know that we're in the last days. 
you know, because you can see it in Scripture. But, uh, but we're going to start this series, and the title of the series, and I'm going to break it up into th three or four different parts, but is Band of Believers. Amen. Band of Believers. Uh, how many have ever seen Band of Brothers? Yeah. Well, I thought about that this morning, and I was a huge fan of that uh, uh, World War II, especially the European theater and, 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 you know, Battle of the Bulge and all those kind of things. Big buff on that. And uh, so I was thinking about that this morning. And the scriptures, uh, while I'm talking, you can open up to our text is going to be James chapter 1. And we're going to look at this. And I brought my washcloth with me because I don't know why I sweat so much, but I do. Anyway. And it's not because I'm overweight, all right? So, <laughs> in case you were thinking that, all right? In case you were thinking that. Because even when I was very skinny, <laughs> I used to sweat. So, anyway. But gl glory to God. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I was thinking about this, and the scriptures, Paul, uh, who, who under inspiration of the Holy Ghost wrote two thirds of the New Testament, and and you know we read a lot of the the epistles and what he wrote, and then of course there were the other apostles, John and Peter, and then young Timothy the pastor, and Titus. There was a lot in James, and uh, but he always likened the church, and he always likened believers to an army. He, 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 used, he used soldiers as an analogy, he used athletes as an analogy, and he used farmers in, in 1 Timothy, right? Uh, about talking about fighting the good fight of faith. And, he, and so w what the Lord had impressed upon my heart is we're going to look at the military side of these things because we are to be a band of believers. Band of believers. You know, we're not to run in fear. We're not to run and hide and hope that, uh, you know, the devil doesn't notice us. We're supposed to, especially, this is the time for the church to rise and shine. Amen. Not to sleep and hide, but to get up boldly, boldly, and go, and, and go after the works of darkness that are trying to, to, to attack the church and the world in general. Amen. It is. The devil has one plan, and that's to wipe mankind out, especially believers because we possess inside of us truth that'll save someone and rescue someone Amen. from going to hell Amen. and the enemy understands this that this is his last advance this is the last and final push when i began thinking about this and and you know i i went down in my office at my house and i just started praying and the holy spirit just brought me right to james and i just started writing 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 and this is the last uh, advance for the church as well. God, he's coming back. And I believe we are, and I'm not prophesying, it's scripture. The scripture is prophecy. Uh, I believe that we are going to the generation that's going to see the return of the Lord. Amen. I do. I really do. And, uh, you know, however many years that may be, I don't know. Who knows? But you, it said you'll know by the signs of the time. Yeah. So this is the most exciting time. So as the church... If we're going to be the generation that ushers that we've heard and watched movies and read that the trumpets are going to blast and then the dead in Christ are going to rise and then all those who remain are going to be in the twinkling of an eye caught up. Amen. That's us. We should know something about that Amen. event, shouldn't we? Yep. And we should be prepared for it. Amen. We should be prepared for it. So, uh, so in thinking about this, and our, our text is going to be um, from James chapter 1, but uh, I was thinking about the band of brothers. And I said, you know, we are a band of believers. Yes. And the same way that if you saw that episode in that, in that HBO miniseries um, when they were in the Battle of the Bulge, yeah. and it looked like it was over, it was over. You know, they were forgotten. The weather was not in favor of them. They couldn't get supplies to them. They were, had them surrounded. Surrounded. How many feel like the enemy has you surrounded? It's not over. Nope. It is not over. It's not over. And we know what happened in that miniseries. But we also know what happens at the end of this book. We are victorious. We are victorious. Say this, no weapon, no weapon formed against me 
can prosper. Let's say that again. No weapon formed against me can prosper, will prosper. On my way over here, the Lord said it to me like this. No enemy's tactics di uh, designed to get me will ever be successful. No enemy's tactic designed to get you. And listen to this last part of that. Will ever be successful. Will ever be successful. Which denotes that there's going to be a battle. And there's going to be a fight. But if we'll stay on God's side, it could never win. It'll never win. It'll never win. And what does the enemy do? He does his best to get you, to sift you, and get you to let go in the battle. Because the, minute, the only way he can win is if he can convince you that you're losing. Yeah. And, and convince you to quit. And that gets hard in battles. And I know that the church is under a lot of pressure in these last days. But this is the time for the church to dig deeper. It's not the time to put your Bible away and say, you know what, this is just too hard. Too many are doing that. This is the time that if you're giving 100%, you need to give 110%. There's a time where you need to double up on your reading. If you're not reading, you need to start reading. And if you are reading, start to double up on it. Because the enemy is, is, is launching an offensive but we don't have to be afraid of this. That we know that this is going to happen. He told us this so that we wouldn't be caught off guard. But people who don't know this knowledge, they're caught off guard. And so talking about the, the title, Band of Believers, today's title of this particular uh, part of the series, part one, is Shock Factor. Amen. Shock Factor. We're going to talk about shock factor and the, what great lengths that the master, the head of the church, Jesus, went through to eliminate the shock factor for us. I hope, I mean, I'm excited about it. <laughs> you guys are like, ah, shock factor. All right. Anyway, anyway, let's, let's, let's start off in James chapter 1. Yeah, I just gave you the shock factor, huh? All right, James chapter 1. Glory to God. And this will be our text for this series. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Starting in verse 1, it says, James, as I'm reading, uh, well, I am reading from the Amplified. I think I want to read it from that. Yes, I do. I want to read it from the Amplified. And I think we do have that, so you guys can follow along. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered abroad among the Gentiles in the dispersion, greetings, rejoice. Verse 2. Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Let that sink in a little bit. Consider it wholly joyful whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Does this describe anybody in this room right now? If I could lay on the floor and put my legs up, I would too. Okay, yes, this describes us. We're going to talk about shock factor, all right? Be assured, verse 3, and understand that the trial and the proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Amen. But let, verse 4, endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be able, you, so that you may be people perfect and fully developed with no defects Lacking in nothing. Amen. Are we seeing this? Yes. Yes. The devil is launching his last offensive against the church. Jesus already gave us, already. already gave us how we are to react, how we are to respond. To take the shock factor out of our lives. Right. Knowing this, but if people don't know this, they're going to be shocked when the enemy comes against them. And they say, why does it seem like everything I touch is turning to... It feel like I'm just going down the tubes. 
faster than I could, you know, keep my head above water. No weapon formed against me can prosper, will prosper. The Holy Spirit is telling us, count it joy when you fall into these distressing times. Why is he telling us to count it joy? Because he wants us to be fully developed, lacking nothing. And the way you fully develop and lack nothing is when you've gone through some things. Amen. Amen. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, I'm not preaching negativity. I'm giving truth from his word Amen. that's going to help us overcome these distressing times that we're living in. Amen. The unknowns. I mean, we're watching TV like glued to it right now. And it's saying the same thing. Let's look in the scriptures. Look in the scriptures. Don't look at the news. You understand? These things are designed to sift you, to get you in fear, to get you in panic, to shock you. Jesus gave us this word so that we would not be shocked. John 16 and 33. I've been reading that to you. If you could put that up there for a minute. John 16, 33. Glory to God. We will not be shocked. We will not be shaken. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world... You have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. He's telling us that. Why? He just revealed to us so that we're not shocked when this happens. Right? So we should not be surprised. We should, obviously, what it should do is cause us to recognize where it's coming and be ready. Start to get happy. Start to get happy because, what do he say? Be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, and undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Now, is that scripture or what? Is that Jesus? That's Jesus said those. In, in, the, in the Bible, if you have red writing, that's red writing. Jesus said that. And it's just as powerful right now as when they penned it 2,000 years ago. In fact, this is the thing that we're going to need to hold on to during these times. As a band of believers, the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The church as this occupying band of believers and you individually and your families. If, but there's something we have to do. There's something that we have to do. So James was telling us, to consider it joy. Amen. Then he says, uh, because he said, be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance, steadfastness, and patience. Patience. And then he says, let endurance, steadfastness, and patience have full play and let it do a thorough work. So we're going to go through those, some things so that these, these things can do what they're supposed to in us. Amen. Do you understand? And what's it going to do for us? What's it say in verse 4? So that we can be perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Amen. Lacking in nothing. Fully armed with the truth. Fully armed. Fully armed. So, trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. That's what that patience means. I looked it up. Let, when, when it says, let endurance, steadfastness, and patience have full play, it means trustworthiness. Can it be trusted? Trustworthiness. How do you know if you can trust someone? How do you know? How do you know? Does anyone in here trust somebody? How did you... How do you know that you can trust them? The, all these are, there's no, I'm not, no one's going to get it ah, ah, wrong. Okay, so you, you, you know that you can trust them because you know their character, right? You've tried them. 
You've seen that they do what they say they're going to do. Now, do we know anybody who says a whole bunch and never does one thing that they say? How many of you trust them? Why? Why? That's, that's exactly right. You don't get to the top of the ladder by jumping out of the window and trying to hang on at the top rung. Okay? You start at the bottom, and as you endure and go through some things, you make it to the top. And it's all done in the strength and power of God. It's not in our own ability or flesh. So he said that you will be, so it's trustworthiness. Can it be trusted? Steadfastness and patience, all quality character traits. Amen. All. You know, we, we all know people that if they don't get what they want when they think they deserve it, they, they just, you see them bail on you. And then you say to yourself, thank God that I did not <laughs> trust them. Because it's a character thing, right? If somebody's supposed to be doing a certain thing, they'll remain faithful doing what they're doing until, until they're not going to get upset because they were overlooked. They're going to keep on doing what they know to do. They are going to endure. They are going to be patient and they are going to be steadfast. All quality character traits that we need in order to develop and lack nothing. So today we're talking about shock factor. We already read John 16, 33. He told us, he told us uh, this, that these things are going to happen so that we wouldn't be shocked when it did. Amen. And But we need to renew our minds and recognize that when we're under duress and pressure, God is preparing us for greatness. Yes, but will we endure and can we be trusted? Think about this. Now, what happens when you're shocked? You know, I mean, shock is like you can be shocked in amazement. You can be shocked by electricity. And when you get shocked by electricity, you don't know what happened. You're laying there and bewildered, like what just happened? Um, <laughs> keep looking at my washcloth. <laughs> is it disgusting? Well. Give me a handkerchief. Anyway, so uh, shock, what does shock do to somebody, though? It temporarily uh, freezes you. It disables you initially, right? When you're shocked by something, you don't know what to do, and you sit there stunned. And it's when we're stunned like that that the enemy gets to take some shots at us. This is why Jesus uncovered the shock factor. So as believers, when symptoms appear, we don't have to be shocked by that. We don't have to go, oh my gosh, but I've been going to church for 10 years. And enemy's like, yeah, yeah, see, it doesn't work. Comes right to your mind. You start entertaining it. What is he doing? He's sifting you. He's hitting you. He's throwing more on top of you to get you by the shock of this situation. To get you to let go of God. And if you do, he pounces on you and destroys you, which is his intention to start with. Jesus uncovered that for us by telling us, count it all joy. Don't be shocked when these things happen to you. But know this, it's going to make you perfect. If you'll stay in me, I have overcome the world. That's why no weapon formed against me can ever be successful. Can ever be successful if I stay on God's side of things. But if I allow myself to be sifted and to yield to fear and to yield to doubt and unbelief, well, then the enemy could come in and, and, and eat my lunch. But if I refuse to do that, I'm going to stay of good cheer. Right. Yeah, but pastor, it hurts. <laughs> Never said that it didn't hurt. Of course it hurts. It hurts. I bet it hurt Joseph when they sold him into slavery. I bet it hurt Joseph's feelings and everything else when, uh, what's his name, what's her name lied about him, Potiphar's wife. 
I bet it hurt him. The guy went to jail for a long time. Never did anything. I bet it hurt. I bet it hurt. I bet it hurt Jesus. I bet it did. I bet it hurt Abraham. I bet it, I bet it hurt Moses. Think about this for a minute. That's when we need to dig deeper and go further in the word than we ever have. It's not the time to let go and just let God. It's time to hold fast and press on is what it's time to do. Knowing that these light afflictions are but for a moment. They're temporary. They're temporary. We overcome. And I know it's hard. And I know in the battle. But this is why we are a band of believers. Yes. Do you understand that? They, when I watched the Battle of the Bulge in that series, they encouraged one another. Yes, they, they helped one another. They left no man behind. Right. When one was down, the other one said, Hey, 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 look at me. We're going to get through this. Amen. Do you see that? That's what we're supposed to do as a church. That's why it's so important to assemble together. And to encourage one another. Yes. To encourage one another. When you're in the battle and it is hard and it's raging on and you're in pain. You have one another. You have the word. You have the word. You dig deep into it. And you stir yourself up. We're talking about soldiers. We're not talking about, uh, you know, just going like we're on vacation somewhere and, and, and everybody's handing everything to us. We're in a battle. We are in a battle. There's a spiritual battle going on right now. For society, for the, against the church, against everything that is moral, against everything that we have ever stood for. The enemy is attacking it. And it's not a personal matter. It's a spiritual matter. We can't fight it in personal issues from the flesh. It needs to be fought in the spirit. How? On our knees. Seeking God, yes. trusting Him yes. to help us get through. Amen. My trust isn't in men. No. I don't care what happens in Washington, D.C. No, no, no. I don't. I trust God. <laughs> Is God only bound to help me by based on what happens in Washington, D.C.? If that's the case, well, then we got a problem. Amen. But that's not the case. That's not the case. Regardless of what happens, God is still God. He's still our Father. And He still knows how to provide manna in the wilderness. Glory to God. So, shock factor. We should not be shocked by these things that are going on. By these tests, by these trials that seemingly come out of nowhere. Because they're not just seemingly coming out of nowhere. They're designed by the enemy to try to, to discredit you and to get you out of the fight. To get you out of the fight. But he can't do it. The only way you can get out of the fight is if you decide, I'm ringing out and I'm out. I'm done. I'm just not going to do this no more. Yeah, but pastor, it's so hard. Again, your mind is your mind. I'm not saying that it's easy. I've been in some long, drawn-out battles. Okay, the enemy's a liar. Yes, and the further I go in him, with him in this battle, speaking the word, the worse it's going to be for him when it's over. Because we win. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Not in my own strength and ability, but the word, the word. My faith is in what he said. And he never lies, ever, ever. Will we endure? Can we be trusted? Amen. Can we be trusted? Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. And I'm going to, again, I'm reading this from the, uh, from the Amplified this morning. (laughs) 
Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, fear not. Don't you love that? Fear not. Fear not. Who's fear from? The devil. Where's faith from? God. So if God tells us to fear not, what are we supposed to do? Fear not. Fear not. Yeah, but. Yeah, but nothing. Fear not. Fear not. Yeah, but pastor, you don't really know. I may not, but fear not. He said not to fear. He said not to fear. Yeah, but it's scary. It might be. I think getting thrown into a fiery furnace could be very devastating. Could be super fearful, especially when the king says, dude, you guys are irritating me seven times hotter. That's a tough place. That's a tough place. He tells us, fear not. There is nothing to fear. For I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. <laughs> yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you. Yes, and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Let's read that again, because that irritates the devil. Fear not. I'm going to read it from the New King James. You don't have to. You can leave that one up there. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We have nothing to be shocked over. We have nothing to fear. Because what did he tell us? He's with us. He's with us. He'll uphold us with his righteous right hand. There's something else I wanted to. Oh, the uh, dismay. This is what be dismayed means. To deprive of that strength or firmness of mind which constitutes courage. To discourage, to dishearten, to sink or depress the spirits or resolution. Hence, to affright or terrify. That's what be dismayed means. And when, we, when, when we're not to be shocked and dismayed when things happen. This is why we're talking about this this morning. We're not to all of a sudden lose our firmness of mind and our strength and our courage. All of a sudden, what? And that's what, when they sent the 12 spies, remember to spy out the land? Yeah, yeah. Joshua, Joshua and Caleb came back. They all, 12 of them saw the same thing, but the other 10 were shocked and dismayed. Yeah. Amen. Their courage was zapped from them, and they said, there is no way. And Joshua and Caleb came back and said, wait, time out. Shut, shut it down. Yes, we can. Our God is able. Do you hear those words? Who else used those words? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego used the same words. Abraham used the same words, didn't he? Our God is able. Our God is able. So we are not to be dismayed by any of these things when an attack comes on us. But we are to be of good cheer. You mean I'm supposed to get happy? Not happy that it's happening, because nobody's happy that it's happening, okay? But happy in spite of it, because you know what the outcome is going to be. And you know that the trying of my faith is going to produce patience. It's going to produce endurance. It's going to set me up for something better than I have now. That's why we count it joyful. And without a test, there is no testimony. Without a battle, there is no breakthrough. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Flip over a couple chapters to Isaiah 54. Yeah. Everybody with me this morning? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, weapon. no weapon. Let's read that. I know I quoted it to you, but let's just look at it in the scriptures. Isaiah 54, 17. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, we'll start in verse 16. <laughs> but 
Behold, and I, oh, we have it up here, good. And then I'll read it from the New King James. <laughs> Keep going back and forth, but. Behold, I have created the smith who blows on the fire of coals and who produces a weapon for its purpose. And I have created the devastator to destroy. Yeah. Don't you love that? Yeah. I created him to destroy him. Amen. Because I can. Amen. Because I can. Say that. Because he can. Because he can. Why am I healed and made whole? Because he is. Because he can. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Do I have any servants of the Lord in here? This is what is yours. This is what is mine. Glory to God. Who's handling this for us? Come on, who's doing this? Us, we got to get strong enough to be able to make this happen? No, no. We have to stay in faith, stay in the word, and trust him. And this is what he will do for you. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. This is the righteousness or the vindication which they obtain from me. This is, what, this is that which I impart to them as their justification, Amen. says the Lord. Amen. Says the Lord. Amen. You, you know what we need to start thinking? I thought about this today. We need to start seeing ourselves like Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 says, seated in heavenly places with Jesus. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. So we need to just always go like this. Look to the left. Because that's where Jesus and God are sitting. And, G and God just goes, he looks over, he sees his son, and he goes like this, and he sees you sitting there. And he's like, start decreeing. You're sitting on a throne up here. We, we, we decree things from this position. Don't be hiding. Don't be shocked. Start, I've given you authority. Start using your authority. See yourself there. See yourself sitting in the heavenly places in the throne room next to God the Father, the Creator. Because that's where He sees us, positionally. And He gave us access to His name. He said, in my name, you'll cast out demons. You'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Right? So when you start to feel a little apprehensive and when you go to do it, just look to the left. And he's going to look back and he's going to be like, you got it. You got it. You're doing it. You're doing it. That's how we do it. Positionally, that's where we're seated. So sick, no weapon, brother, can overtake you. Can never be successful against you. Nothing. No weapon formed against the church can prosper. We are in Christ. Seated in heavenly places with him. This is why the shock factor should be completely eliminated. I'm not saying we got to go looking for stuff so that we can overcome. It'll find you. Just be, just don't be shocked when it does. Amen. Just say, I know that I'm more than a conqueror yeah. through Jesus Christ. Amen. Not in my own self, but in him, I'm more than a conqueror. He is my strength. I'm not shocked. I'm not dismayed. My strength hasn't been zapped. I'm not sidelined and saying, oh, what are we going to do? Do we always know what to do? Yes. Yes, we do know what to do. We do what the Word says. Word says that was just one of those trick questions. That's all right. <laughs> no, actually, it's a yes and no. We don't always know what to do, but we know this. We know where our faith is. And we're never at a loss because by faith, we always know what to do. We always know. Abraham he journeyed his whole life not knowing where he was going. Think about that for a minute. He God always say, just get up, on, you know, take your tents down, the whole tribe of you, all you people. And it wasn't like 10 people. It was a lot. And go to the place that I will tell you. He had no idea where that is. But he said, if the Lord told me, I'm just going to keep going until he shows me. Right? That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. Do we trust God like that? Do we believe that he said, by the stripes of my son, you were healed? Amen. Yeah, but I got this persistent pain. No. That's okay. But did I not say that by the stripes that were put on my son, you were healed? Yes. 
So then what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to trust him? Are we going to keep saying, even though our body says something different, are we going to stay with the word? If you'll stay with the word, friends, you will have victory. The people who don't, they don't stay with the word. They don't stay with the word. And the enemy does not want us to stay with the word. But it's not up to him. It's not up to him. We're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Why are we strong in the Lord? Because we spend time in his word. That's the only way you can. If you don't crack your Bible except for holidays and that's it, this, you're, you're way behind. You can't expect any of this because it's by faith anyway. And how does faith come? By hearing. By hearing. If you're not hearing, then you don't have faith. And if you don't have faith, then you have nothing to base what you believe on. And anything that you say is just revealing what's in your heart. Do you see this? Amen. It's important, important, guys, to stay in the Word. And, and so we're just getting into this. But, uh, but, but he said, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Can prosper. Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to wrap up here. <clears throat> we're told... Now, this is important, and it, this is just a little to, the, to let us know. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. The scriptures tell us to not be ignorant, to not be ignorant of his devices, of his tactics. We cannot be ignorant of Satan's strategies. You see, if we're ignorant of his strategies, then we are shocked when he does something. Right? You know, how many have ever watched a scary movie before? Right? The very, how many have watched the same one twice? Were you as scared the second time? No. Why? Because the shock factor was already gone. You know, they told you, or if you only saw it once, but you're, you know, the people say, when this part comes up, just get ready because, you know, you're going to be, so you were ready for it. And you may have even said, well, that wasn't that bad. But had you not known, you'd have been shocked, right? You'd have been shocked. This is, the, this is how the enemy operates. He wants people to be ignorant of his devices. Because if we don't know what he can do and what he does and try to do and we don't understand his strategies, then when it happens, we're shocked by it. How many believers have said, why me, Lord? <laughs> why me, Lord? Don't ever let that doubt and junk come out of your mouth. Ever, ever. Listen, if you're a believer, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If nothing else, that is a great gift. So saying, why me, is pride. Why me, Lord? <clears throat> if you understood the enemy's devices, you would never say that. Because you'd recognize this is the enemy who's afraid of me trying to disqualify me and discredit me. But I refuse. I refuse. Say that. I refuse. I am fully persuaded that what God said, he will do. So I am not moved. By what the enemy tries against me. Sickness, lack, depression, you name it. I am not moved by it. I'm not moved. I understand where it stems from. And I also understand that he's been defeated. And that I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ. Far above all principalities and powers. And that when I submit to God and I resist the devil, he hangs out a little bit and discusses it with you. He runs, but he knows who's in submission to God and he knows the ones that just talk the church talk and the ones who talk the church talk, he's going to hang around and negotiate with you and he is the king of reason and I can guarantee you that he'll reason you right out of your healing. We cannot be deceived. 
We cannot be ignorant of his devices. Because when the pressure comes on, we'll be shocked. And instead of digging deep into the word, we're going to turn on the news. We're going to look at Google. We're going to call our friends. And we're going to say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Have you ever had this before? And they're going to be like, no, you better go see a specialist. That's right. This is how the enemy. Now, we're not denying that maybe you have something. However, your answer is not found in Dr. Google. Your answer is found in the word. In the Word. It's the same answer for every problem. Amen. The same answer. If it's finances, my God shall supply all of my need according to His riches and glory. Yeah. Now, are you giving? Are you sowing? Are you obeying? Because that's a condition. Yeah. That's, right. that's a condition. If you're doing that, then you can in faith yeah. say, my God shall supply. But you know this as well. If you're not doing any of those things, you cannot in faith Say, my God is going to supply all my needs. You know why? Your heart condemns you. Yeah. You say to yourself, oh, man, how can I really believe? I don't give. Yeah. And the Spirit of God will say, well, just start giving. It's simple. It's simple. Our answer is found in the Word. In the Word. And we're going to end with this scripture. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's not be forgetful hearers. Let's, let's take this word that we're hearing and, and practice it. Meditate on it. Do it. Amen. Amen. Keep on doing it. Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, let's just do it like this. Let's start in verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. And I'm going to read this from the Amplified. Good, thank you. It says, Do not, therefore, fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Amen. Do not cast away your confidence. Confidence in what? Confidence in what he said. Not confidence in what everyone else is saying. God is not obligated to perform what other people say. He's obligated to perform what he said. So cast not away your confidence in what he said. For it carries with it a great payoff, a great compensation of reward. Well, what is it? What is the reward? Whatever it is that you're believing him for. Life, long, healthy, satisfied life. Fully persuaded that that's going to happen. Uh, verse 36. For you have need. Did we read this? No, this is, a, this is another one that talks about needing steadfastness and patience and endurance. Two or three witnesses, right? Let every word be established. For you have need of... Because maybe you didn't believe me before, but now we're going to see it again. All right? <laughs> For you have need of steadfast, patience. Same three words. Same three. Steadfast, patience, and endurance, so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy the full, to the full, what is promised. Sounds like the other verse. The other one says, fully complete, lacking nothing. Yeah. Same thing. Amen. But what is our part? What is our part? Did we, it's, it's remaining faithful, steadfast, enduring. Enduring what? Enduring hard times. Enduring tough times. Distress. You know? Enduring hard times. We said last week in uh, Luke chapter 22, in verse 31 and 32, we were talking about um, how Jesus was telling the disciples what was going to take place. And of course, Peter's running his mouth. You know, the Lord tells him, listen, Peter. Peter's like, I will die with you. I'll go in the ocean with you. I'll go to jail. I'll go anywhere with you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, listen. Three times you're going to deny me before the rooster even crows. That's what he said to him. And Peter's like, wait, what? Impossible. Impossible. But then he went on to say, 
Satan has desired you. Satan desires us to have us, but he can't. Just because you desire something doesn't mean you have it, right? He desires to have us, to sift us, to separate us from our faith. But Jesus said to him, Peter, don't worry. I'm going to pray for you so you don't ever have to endure anything. Is that what he said? That's not what he said. That's what we wish he said. But that's not what he said. What did he say? And a lot of us will say, well, why couldn't he have just said that, you know, I'm going to pray for you, Peter, that you won't have to endure any hard stuff. Because that wouldn't be the truth. Did Jesus endure hard stuff? Did the people who came before them, all the patriarchs, did they endure hard stuff? Are we enduring hard stuff? Are we in line with them? So everything is common, correct? Jesus said, Peter, Satan wants to sift you, but I'm praying for you that your faith does not fail. That your faith does not. What's going to get you over? Being miraculously delivered and never having to deal with anything? No, because then you won't know. You won't be perfect, lacking nothing. You, you won't have developed in strength and endurance and patience. But your faith in what he said will get you through. Amen. And we know. Look, And then he said to, to, to Peter, and afterwards you'll go strengthen the brethren. And here we are today being strengthened through what Peter did. Do you see that? Amen. To pray. Now, I'm not saying pray that you go through something. Don't pray that either. Don't pray negative and fear and doubt. But to pray... Lord, if you don't want to ever have to go through anything, then just go to heaven now. Because up there, you won't have to go through anything. But you won't accomplish what God asked you to do here. We're going to go through things. But Jesus, his prayer was that your faith not fail. Our faith is what's going to see us. through. Our faith, our believing what he says in his word is what's going to get us through. It's going to get you through every financial hardship. It's going to get you through every sickness, disease, COVID, cancer. It's going to get you through depression. It's going to get you through everything in life, believing, having faith in what he spoke. That's it. That's it. That's as simple as it is. doesn't need to be more complicated. The enemy will come to your mind to reason with you, and that's where complication comes in. That's where fear comes in. That's where reason. That's where doubt. That's when you get sifted and sidelined, and that's when you do without. But that's not us. That's not this band of believers. We are those. Now, here we go. Thirty-six. For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance, so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God, and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised. Amen. For still a little while, a very little while, and the coming one will come, Jesus, and will not delay. Amen. But, but the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, and holy fervor, born of faith and conjoined with it. Amen. That's a whole lot right there. Mm -hmm. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. But, but, 39, this is the one, I did all that to get to this one. 39, but our, our way is not that of those who draw back to eternal misery, perdition, and are utterly destroyed. But we are of those who believe, who cleave to and trust in and rely on God through Jesus Christ the Messiah and by faith, Preserve the soul. That is who. We don't shrink back to perdition. You know what shrink back means? Timidity and fear. We're not moved. God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. We're not moved by that. We're not shocked by that. I don't care if a bomb blows up right next to me. 
God is on my side. I'm not going to be timid and I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to draw back to perdition. You know what perdition means? Loss and destruction. So when you yield to fear and timidity, and timidity, loss and destruction follow right behind it. Follows right behind But, but we are of those. Who are we? Come on. We are of those who believe to the persevering of the soul. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a band of believers. Right here. This company of believers. Regiment 108. All right? That's who we are. That's who we are. We're not moved by what we see, feel, think, hear. We're moved only by what his word says. And his word calls us more than conquerors. He calls us victorious. He sees us seated positionally in heaven next to him. So that's who we are. That's who we are. Situations, duress, problems should not shock us. We're not moved by it. We're not moved by it. We're only interested in doing and believing what the master said. That's it. And how are you going to know? You're going to be led by the Holy Spirit inside of you. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet this morning. Glory to God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for speaking to us this morning. Your word does not return void, Father, but it accomplishes everything that it was sent forth to do. And you are obligated, Father, to watch over your word. What you've said to see to it that it comes to pass. I pray for every person here today, Father. All of those who are in this building, those who watched online, wherever you may be. I pray that these words would not return void, Father. But that we would take heed to what we've heard. And when we're challenged, we would side with you and stay on your side. And only speak and believe what we've heard you say in your word. I pray for the strength and the courage to stand as a band of believers, to overcome in these last days. Father, you need your church to rise up and shine so that you can manifest your power and your glory through us, a spotless, wrinkle-free, glorious, holy church. That's who we are, strong faith fighters, full of joy, full of humility, and full of faith. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that your word is working in our lives now. I ask that you watch over us, that you protect us, Father, that your word continue to be a light to our feet, a lamp unto our path, Lord God, that the Holy Ghost would lead us. We look to him. We recognize him. We acknowledge him as our help, our source, our guide, our quickener, our strengthener. Lead us and guide us. We commit to obeying, we commit to cooperating and to participating with what you want to do. And as in doing so, Father, I thank you that you will manifest your presence, manifest your power wherever we may be. May people see you, the real Jesus, your spirit, your anointing upon us as we go about doing good to all that we see. May you be glorified. Father, we thank you for the great harvest that's coming into the church. And we declare right now that this company, this band of believers are ready for the next step that you have for us. We will faithfully follow you all the days of our lives. And I tell you, Satan, right now, with authority, as an under-shepherd over these believers, that you'll take your hands off of every person in this room. That that your power is broken over the minds of every person here. That deception, that these evil strategies, that these works of darkness that you're trying to assault the church with, I render them inoperative right now in Jesus' name. From a place of authority in heaven, as I look at my Father, I dictate to that in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for a spirit of freedom and liberty and a hunger and a thirst for you, for you, that the things of this world would just grow strangely dim as we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. I declare that over this people. And I thank you, Father. We fully expect to rise up, to increase, to come up in our believing and our receiving. We lay hold of your promises, for they are yes and amen. 
May you be glorified in us and through us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask this. If there is anybody in this room and those who are watching online, uh, that this is the first time you've heard anything about a message of Christ, at the end of the day, it's having a relationship with Jesus that gains you access into heaven. Without relationship with him and receiving him, you're, you're, you're destined for an eternity of torment in hell. And that's the, the, the sobering facts. But there's so much to gain yeah. in serving God and surrendering to him. Yeah. But every person needs to come to this place of humility in their life and accept the gift of salvation. So with nobody looking around, this is the most important time. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I don't mean a traditional thing. I don't mean while well, I go to church on the holidays. I'm talking about personal relationship, just like you know your friends. That's how Jesus wants to know you. And if you don't know him that way and you've never asked him to be the Lord of your life, raise your hand. I want to pray with you today. There's not one person that should leave this room today, this building, not knowing that they have salvation and that their name is scribed in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Anyone, we're going to wait a minute. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now and you, you may not know it's the Holy Spirit, but that uneasy feeling, then you need to respond to that. That's God. Yes, hallelujah. That's God. Anyone. Well, glory to God. If you're a believer, raise both hands and thank God that you are. And if you're watching online and you've never received Jesus, today is the day of salvation. We, there's no distance in the spirit, but we do have our elders and our associate pastors and watching this morning. And if you did pray or you want to pray this prayer and you want to receive Jesus, please let us know. We have information that we want to give to you. You're not in this alone. We are here for you. And together as a company, a band of believers will overcome. We'll overcome, we'll watch out for one another, we'll pray for one another, we'll encourage one another. And God will receive all the glory, for he's worthy of it. Amen? Let's lift our hands towards heaven and thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that your word is life. We've taken a huge dose of life into us today. Father, our faith has been injected with your word. Your word is powerful. May you bring glory to yourself. Be glorified in us and through us, Father. We thank you that we look forward with expectation for our best days are still in front of us. Our greatest times ever are are ahead of us and we go forward in a spirit of faith and joy and peace pursuing everything that you have for us to do may you be glorified in jesus name amen and amen god bless you all thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us online god bless you